Bibi and welcome once again to my channel, your home, our home, the place where we get to hang out. Anyway, so I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all of my friends and all of my family members who have supported this journey. It's been a week but we have over 150 likes on our Facebook page which is amazing it's really amazing I thank you from the bottom of my heart because that's what today's message is about actually maybe I'm jumping the gun by telling you but anyway I to some degree didn't believe that I would get my friends and my family to support me if I did start something I didn't feel in that like I was enough. I didn't feel like I had anything to offer. And I just didn't want the extra work. So if you know me for years and years and years, I've been cooking and I've been eating. And for the most part, everybody always just asks for the recipes. And it's so much work for me personally to actually write down what I'm doing. Measure, I don't measure when I cook. So measure the ingredients so that I can give you exact quantities and yeah and Jay, just thinking what if it doesn't come out right on the other side I mean I could make it a thousand times and it tastes the same but what if somebody else makes it and then it's like I'm a phony because yeah um, plant-based food can be a bit temperamental when you're using like special ingredients and stuff anyway long story short I did not have faith in this subject which brings me to today's message. Um, I'm sharing a message that I've been studying for the past two weeks, I think. But only today did it really click in my head that this is what God has been talking to me about all this time. And it just illuminated my perspective on me and what I have in such a big and great way that I wanted to share it with you and yeah, let you in on my life and let you in on my struggles. I don't want to tell you this when I have overcome. I want to tell you when I am in the storm, when the seas are raging, when the wind is blowing and everything is just all over the place. That's where I am currently. I'm not out of it. I don't 100% believe or 100, I'm not 100% convinced that this is going to succeed. But with what I have and right now where I am I am going to give God my best so that's the conclusion of the matter but let's get into the study grab your Bibles and let's get to it so today we will be looking at the book of Luke Luke chapter 9 reason being this is um, a book I've been studying for the past three to four weeks and now I'm in chapter 9 and that's where God illuminated my mind to my faithfulness <clears throat> or my lack of faith in this case but let's not dwell on the negative okay right so we will be doing about seven verses but we'll mainly focus on three so I will read Luke chapter 9 verses 10 to 17 in your hearing and the apostles, when they were returned, told him all that they had done. And he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethesda. And the people, when they knew it, followed him. And he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that needed healing. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve and said unto him, Send the multitude away that they may go into the towns and country round about, and lodge and get victuals. For we are here in a desert place. But he said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said, We have no more but five loaves and two fish, except we should go and buy meat for all these people. For they were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, Make them sit by fifties in a company. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. And he broke and gave to the disciples to sit before the multitude. And they did eat and were all filled. 
and there was taken up of fragments that remained to them twelve baskets. Amen. So <clears throat> the story, sorry, the story has been such a blessing and let me not call it a story. This rendition of history has been such a great blessing to me because it has taught me a lot about these insecurities that I struggled with opening and starting this channel or page. I don't know what, we'll call it a ministry. Yeah, going into ministry for me, this online ministry was very difficult. Um, there were so many times when I would open a page and delete it, or I would give it a name and then for weeks and weeks and weeks talk with my husband over and over again about different names and copyright laws and just things just kept getting in the way. And I think looking back now, in all honesty, I didn't push hard enough to just get those things out of the way. I just, I held on to them and allowed them to take over the reason why I was pursuing this, forgetting who I was doing it for from the beginning. And that was, I think, the greatest lesson for me. So let's go into what God has given. First of all, in verses 10, right? The story starts, and if you start at the beginning of verse 1 of Luke 9, you come to realize that the disciples had been given a mission. They had been called, and they had been blessed, and they had been given the Holy Spirit. And they had gone out into this countryside place. They had gone into different towns, by two, two by twos, and they had healed and preached. And here they come back to Jesus, they give him a report, and they are so tired. They are so tired and they are so exhausted. And that's where we started in verses 10, right? When they come back to Jesus, they tell him what they've done. And Jesus sees their need and he takes them away. And it says he, he took them to a private place, right? <sighs> in those places when we are tired in life, in those places in life when we feel tired, exhausted, and drained, in those places when we feel depleted by the challenges of it all, by school, by work, by relationships, even by our decisions and things that are just happening, circumstances, it is in Christ that we find rest. He is what will replenish us. He is what will revive and revitalize us. And it is truly not in sleep and it is not in holidays and it's not in time away that we find our replenishment but it was when the disciples had come to Christ and he took them to a place where he knew that they would gain the most that's when they truly got replenished and filled and if you read the other gospels as well they tell you that the disciples actually had worked so hard and they hadn't eaten from the morning when Jesus sent them until the evening when they came back so they were tired spiritually mentally physically they were just all around exhausted and they came to the Savior to be full. So intimacy with Christ is the cure and is the secret for how we will find our healing and replenishment. That is the first lesson I have. I, in this period, felt tired and I, I struggled with grief. I lost my best friend and I struggled with grief and I struggled with insufficiency. And I would pray and I would sing and I would do Bible study, but I wasn't at rest in God. My revival on a daily basis would come from sleep. I remember one Sabbath saying to my husband, I am so tired. Like, you go to church and you leave me. And he refused to leave me. And we went to church. But unfortunately, I think I was faking through the day. Because I found myself so tired by the conversations. And just so drained by it all. Even though I was at church in the presence of the living God with the saints, I was exhausted because I hadn't been resting for real, like absolutely resting in God. I had just been taking little naps, let me call it that, little spiritual naps along the way, but I hadn't been revived and replenished in Him. That's the truth. In relationship with Him, I think that's the best way to put it. I hadn't been in relationship with God. So that's... That's what I first learned. Um, the second lesson I got from verses 11. And it reads that the people, when they saw Jesus, or when they knew that Jesus was there, they knew where he was going. They followed him. Here is a circumstance that I found 
most ironic. These guys are tired, they're exhausted, they just work the whole day and here they're going to Christ and they, he's taking them away and it says to a private desert, he's taking them away to somewhere where they don't, they don't expect to see people. But the great multitude, and I know Christ in his wisdom knew this was going to happen, the great multitude of hungry people followed them. In that desert place where we think we'll find rest and we'll find revival, will be a multitude pressing upon us with challenges, pressing upon us with demand, demanding of us in our exhaustion to serve them. Jesus Christ did not prevent it. He could have taken them anywhere else, but he chose to go to the place where he knew the multitude would be. For in the multitude is where they would find their fulfillment. It's where they would find their replenishment. There was something in that multitude that would revive and spiritually reform them. And that's why he did what he did in his wisdom. And in that moment when you think you are going to the sanctuary with God and you arrive in a place where there is a multitude, a challenge, a circumstance, and something that is challenging to you, we don't see God's wisdom. We don't think he was prepared. It's kind of like, it just happened. And yeah, he didn't control or have control over it but this could not be far from the truth um i have a bible commentary the sda bible commentary where um the writer actually does say that in his wisdom christ desired that the disciples be taught through this lesson of the multitude of his greatness and ability amen so in the pressing multitude that's lesson number two right in the place of rest and replenishment, Jesus brought a multitude. Yeah, so that's lesson number two. Trust God when you are approached by the multitude. Lesson number three, and I think the most important, and I've kind of shortened them because I can see the time's getting out of hand. I've shortened these so that you get the most vital points, the ones that I think were of the greatest impact right so this is probably from verses 12 to verse 15 where um verse 12 where now the disciples say they're the ones who came to jesus and they said like these people are hungry please send them away or send us away and then we'll find them food somewhere and then jesus says no and then the multitude is sat down and jesus prays upon the bread and it's multiplied and then the leftovers are collected right that's where we are that's where i got this lesson the most powerful i promise you i said in the face of the multitude we i want to escape the disciples asked jesus not once but twice twice guys twice they asked jesus christ twice to be relieved of the duty of the multitude they said christ these people are here they're hungry we have nothing for them send them away like let them go find food and lodging somewhere else right in the nearby towns we can't supply their need and then i think in verse 13 again jesus says you guys feed them he says you guys be the ones to feed them he didn't care he didn't ask them what do you mean that i should send them away no he says feed them right and then they say jesus look this is all i am this is all i have right um and if you want me to do this thing that you're asking me to do and here i'm paraphrasing and putting myself into the experience if you want me to do what you want me to do you need to equip me send me away so that i can go somewhere else and get that talent get that skill buy that food and come back and then minister like where i am in my life right now i am not good enough i am not enough these are the insecurities I spoke about earlier where I felt as though I needed a better camera, I needed better lighting, I needed a mic, I needed a tripod. Everything that I could think of, a studio, an editor, a video editing program, a better laptop, everything that I could possibly think 
of that could stand in my way stood in my way because I did not realize that I was already equipped. They said to Jesus, Father in heaven, we have five loaves and two fish and they're not enough, right? Guys, the power, the power of this lesson. Jesus, like, he didn't even bother when they repeated the, re the request the second time. He didn't even bother to answer or to engage in an argument with them. He said, bring to me, my child, what you have and see what I can do with you. Absolutely blew my mind. Heard the story a thousand times. Never saw myself as a disciple who lacked faith. As one who knew that she was called but who refused to go. Or as one who was called and heeded the calling, but didn't think she was good enough. As Moses, when Jesus called him and said, Moses, come speak to my people. And he said, Lord, I am, I'm, not, I'm not one of those people. I, I'm not eloquent in my speech. But Jesus says, like, if I'm calling you, I will equip you. I will equip you. I will give you what it is you need. And trust me, what I have given you is exactly what you need to use to get to where you are. So, enough rambling. I have a quote here that I absolutely have fallen in love with as I was studying. It comes from, um, I think, our higher calling. And the chapter is called To Strengthen and to Encourage. And basically, it stems from the verse, um, Philippians 4.13, that says, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. Not through my tripod, not through my camera, not through a video editor, not through somebody who edits my videos for me. No, I can only do everything through Christ who gives me the strength. Amen. So it says that the Lord has in readiness the most precious exhibitions of his grace to strengthen and encourage a sincere and humble worker. I, I, I don't even want to go into it, like, but God is amazing. It says that all men has, God has given him, and he who improves his ability to God's glory will be an instrument to do good. But we can no more live a religious life without constant prayer and the performance of religious duty than we can have physical strength without taking in food. We must daily sit at God's table. We must receive strength from the living vine if we are to be nourished. Ah! And then it says, it is essential, and guys, please listen to this. It is essential for you to cultivate faithfulness in the little things. And in so doing, you will acquire a habit of integrity in greater responsibilities. Amen. Truly. Let us trust God. Worry is blind and it cannot discern the future. But Jesus sees the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. And in every difficulty, he has in his way prepared relief. Abiding in Christ, we can do all things through him who gives us strength. Amen. So what I learned and what had the greatest impact on me in this lesson was that if we entrust God with the responsibility to provide and we willfully give him everything that we have, he will multiply. He doesn't ask you if your loaves and two fish is organic. He doesn't ask you if it's whole wheat. He doesn't care. All he cares is that you are willing with what you have and he will take that and he will do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ask for and more than you could imagine. That's the God we serve. We cannot allow the enemy to hold us back in our minds and tell us that we're not good enough when we know who we truly belong to, when we understand what he can do. The disciples needed that moment. They needed that multitude. They needed that challenge to see for themselves what Jesus was capable of doing. And it says at the end, do you know how many baskets they collected? Do you know? 12. They collected 12 baskets. One for each disciple. Oh! Like honestly, for me that was the highlight. I was like, <laughs> because they were hungry and they were tired, remember? And they had 
come into this place expecting rest and expecting to be filled, right? And here Jesus is. He didn't just feed the multitude. He gave the disciples 12 baskets. He's like, yeah, take it. Like he was just showing off. And I absolutely love that part where he treasures us so much that he wants to show us personally in relationship with him what he can do. Just know that even where we lack, Jesus is enough. Amen. So that's what I wanted to share with you, friends. And I apologize. Then I lost my train of thought and my mother kept calling my mom. If you're ever going to watch this, which I highly doubt. Um, but yeah, I thank the Lord truly for this message. It has encouraged me in such a great way. And I am now applying my very best efforts with whatever it is I have. I don't have lighting, I don't have the best camera, and I don't have an amazing tripod. But what I have is enough, and I will serve him faithfully. So have a good day, my friend. Blessed service to you and your family. And may God multiply. <laughs>